Hello, this is Dr. David Oster, and on this video, I'd like to discuss bucket handle tears of the menisci. It's not uncommon to tear the medial or lateral meniscus, but it's much less common to sustain what's called a bucket handle tear. Now, this is a view of a knee looking down. This is the right knee, and the upper bone's been taken off, the femur bone. The front of the knee is above, the back of the knee is below. The medial meniscus is outlined here in red, and it's a C-shaped structure. <clears throat> the medial meniscus is less mobile, or moves less, anterior or front and back than the lateral meniscus. The lateral meniscus is outlined here in blue. It's more of an oval-shaped structure, and it's much more mobile than the medial meniscus, and therefore is less frequently torn. The anterior cruciate ligament is here in yellow, and the posterior cruciate ligament is shown here in green. Now many times, and most of the time when the meniscus is torn, it's more of a frayed tear. But occasionally it will tear in a very clean manner, and will tear from the front of the meniscus all the way around to the back of the meniscus. And this makes the inner portion of the meniscus, as outlined in white here, to become mobile because the meniscus is attached where the arrows are pointing on the medial meniscus. And this allows the meniscus to flip over itself, much like a bucket handle will flip over on a bucket. So that meniscus can pivot on those two fixation points and flip into the notch, as shown here. When that occurs, the patient will have significant pain and will not be able to straighten their knee. This type of tear is much less frequent. However, when it occurs, it's a fairly urgent procedure to get it taken care of for two reasons. One is, many times these meniscal tears can be repaired, and a second reason is a person will lose their range of motion and have significant pain because that meniscus is blocking them from straightening their knee. Frequently, these patients will note that the meniscal fragment will displace when their knee is bent or flexed, such as squatting down, and when they stand up, the meniscus will flip over into the notch, and then they'll have significant pain and discomfort, and what they'll notice is that they'll have to move the knee around or bend and straighten it, and they'll feel another pop, and the meniscus will reduce and they'll feel much better. However, there are many times that the meniscus will displace and a patient will not be able to get that meniscus to reduce back into position. So to review, the meniscus can pivot on these two points, can displace into the notch along the anterior cruciate ligament. This limits motion, and then at times it can flip back into position. And when this occurs, the patient will notice improvement in their pain and improvement in their range of motion. So next you'll see an arthroscopic video of a patient with a bucket handle tear. Initially the meniscal tear will be reduced and then I'll pull it forward and it will displace. I'll move it back and forward and you'll see how that bucket handle tear can kind of flip out into the notch area and then flip back uh, in the uh, reduced position. This particular meniscal tear is one that was in the avascular area and is one that will be trimmed up. So here's the beginning of the arthroscopy. The femur is up on top. In the central portion is the meniscus and that's a probe used to manipulate the meniscus. So the meniscus is in the reduced position here and I'm pushing it back into position. So the patient wouldn't have much pain when it's in that position. It's attached in the back right at that position, one of the pivot points. It's attached right there in the front, another one of the pivot points. So that when I pull it forward, it stays attached to those areas, but is able to slide into the notch and get caught in the knee. And when it gets caught in there, it's difficult to extend the knee or fully straighten it and it causes significant pain. 
So then it can slip back into position as shown here. So the tear is reduced now. The meniscus is back where um, it uh, should be. You can see the tear that the probe is in and then here it is displaced again into the notch area. Again, displaced here, attached at the two pivot points, and then reduced. So this meniscal tear was uh, it torn in the area where the meniscus did not have a blood supply, so it would not heal by repairing it. So the first thing I'll do is cut the back pivot point where it's attached, and then I'll come in here and cut almost completely the front pivot point. So these are arthroscopic scissors that come in and I don't cut all the way through the meniscus here because then it can displace and float away into other portions of the knee. So I'd like to keep it attached enough so that it won't move out of position so that I can get what's called a grabber on that and then pull on that and tear that one little fiber there and pull the meniscus out of the knee. So here's the grabber coming in. I'm going, to, I'm going to grab the back part of the meniscus and get a firm grasp on it. And then there it pulled out of the knee. So that's a bucket handle tear of the meniscus that was treated with a partial meniscectomy. So that was a bucket handle tear of a meniscus treated with a meniscectomy by Dr. David Oster. If you have other questions or would like to look at other text or video, please go to my website, davidostermd.com. And if you're interested in viewing a meniscus repair, go to that video and it will show how a bucket handle tear can be repaired with stitches arthroscopically.